Imagine this, you have got just 21 days to prepare for a coding interview in a language you have never used before. Sounds impossible, right? Not at all. Here is how I went from zero to functional in Java. So here is the story. Not long ago, I found myself in a situation that most programmers feared. I was prepping for a big interview, but the catch, they wanted me to know Java and I had zero experience. 21 days, that is all I had to figure it out and prove I could deliver. Sounds wild, right? But what what started as pure panic turned into one of the most rewarding learning experience I have ever had. Now I know what you are probably expecting me to tell. Learn this in week 1, master that in week 2 and boom you are ready. No, that is not what this is about. Instead, I'll share the practical flexible steps I took to get the job done. I'll share the steps you can adapt to learn any programming language even if you have got limited time. So let's start. Step 1. Nail the fundamentals. Sounds simple, right? But this is where the magic happens. I started with a super beginner friendly course on YouTube. You can take a course from Udemy as well. And if you are on a tight budget, multiple free coding boot camps are also available. Now, the key here is repetition. I practiced loops, variables and conditionals over and over. At first, it felt like my brain was fighting me. Like, why does Java syntax looks so complicated? I was googling the same lines of code again and again. But trust me, this is normal. With the repetition, it is starts to stick like muscle memory. And here is a tip. Don't stress about understanding everything perfectly. Just focus on getting the basics to work. It's all about small wins at this stage. Celebrate your first loop runs without breaking. That's progress, man. Okay, once you have got the basics down, it's time to level up. Step 2. Dive into the core concepts. This is where you start understanding how the language actually works for Java. There were two big concepts I had to get my head around. The JVM and object-oriented programming. Sounds crazy, right? But I found it a way to simplify them that made everything click. Let's start with JVM. Imagine it's like a translator. You write your Java code and the JVM translates it into a language your computer can understand, no matter what operating system you are using. It is what makes Java so versatile you can run the same program on Windows, Mac or Linux and it will work perfectly. Cool, right? Understanding this made me appreciate how Java is designed for reliability and compatibility. Now, on to object-oriented programming. This one felt tricky at first, but I came up with a mental image that helped. Think of it like organizing a messy closet. Imagine you have clothes scattered everywhere. To make life easier, you group them, shirts in one section, pants in another, and shoes in their own space. That's exactly what Java does with your code. Instead of dumping everything into one file, it organizes your program into classes and objects. This makes your code more more structured, easier to manage, and reusable. If you are coming from languages like Python or JavaScript, Java can feel a bit strict, like a teacher constantly saying, declare this or type that. At first, it might feel like a hassle, but these rules actually have a purpose. They ensure your code is more reliable and easier to debug. Trust me, once you get the hang of it, you'll start to appreciate how these rules save you from bigger headaches later on. Whenever I got stuck, I reminded myself, it's okay to google stuff. Seriously, don't feel bad about it. If something feels weird or unfamiliar, look it up. That's how you learn. Curiosity is your best friend in this phase. So do not hesitate to dig deeper into anything that does not make sense. And here is the best part. The more you explore, the more it all starts clicking into place. Suddenly, Java does not feel like a stranger anymore. It feels like a new friend you are starting to understand better. Every small moment builds your confidence. And before you know it, the language begins to feel like a second nature. It is really rewarding experience. Alright, step 3. Use the right tools. Trust me, your IDE, that's your integrated development environment, can seriously make or break your learning journey. For Java, I decided to use IntelliJ. And wow, let me tell you, it was a total game changer. Right out of the box, it is packed with features that make coding so much easier. You have got code suggestions that pop up while you are typing, error highlighting that saves you from hours of debugging, and even built-in tools for refactoring and improving your code structure. It is like having a super smart colleague sitting right beside you, whispering hints in your ear, but without the judgment. Now here is a little heads up. Don't get too comfortable.
comfortable with the automation features right away. I know they are tempting, but at the start, you need to type out your code manually. Why? Because typing things out forces you to really engage with the syntax and logic. It builds what I call coding muscle memory, which is essential if you want to write lean functional code without always relying on tools to fix your mistakes. Once you have nailed the basics, though, that's when the real fun begins. IntelliJ has so much to offer, like keyboard shortcuts that let you refactor your code in seconds, integrated testing tools that make running and debugging tests super fast, and even built-in Git integration for version control. It's not just about coding, it's about coding efficiently. Here is another pro tip. Spend some time exploring the documentation for your IDE. Most people overlook this, but the more you know about the tool, the better you can use it to your advantage. IntelliJ, for example, has hidden gems like the ability to analyze your code base for errors or unused imports. Little things like this can save you so much time and effort in the long run. And don't forget, your IDE is not just a tool, it's a partner in the learning journey. When you pick the right one, like I did with IntelliJ, it's not just about convenience, it's about setting yourself up for success. For me, IntelliJ was the perfect fit and I highly recommend giving it a shot if you are learning Java. I'm not promoting it, but you should give it a try. Step 4. Practice, practice, practice. Sorry, but there are no shortcuts here. Putting in hours is essential. For me, this meant creating a daily routine that balanced work, study and practice. I would spend my mornings watching tutorials, afternoons trying out small coding challenges and evenings debugging whatever went wrong. Spoiler alert, a lot went wrong. But here is the thing. Consistency matters more than speed. If 21 days sounds too intense for you, that's totally fine. Set a reasonable goal, maybe 30 days or even 2 months. The key is to keep showing up every day even if it's just for an hour. There were days when I felt stuck, frustrated and ready to give up. But I kept reminding myself every mistake is a lesson and every line of code is progress. Persistence really does pay off. So whether you are aiming for 21 days or taking your time, just keep practicing, trust the process and you'll be surprised at how much you can accomplish. So here is the truth. Learning Java or any programming language is not about starting completely from scratch. It's about translating what you already know from other languages or even just basic problem solving into this one. At the end of the day, programming is not about memorizing syntax. It's about understanding logic, how to break a problem into steps and solve it. Thus, syntax, that's just the language you use to communicate your solution. And trust me, that part comes with time and practice. If I could go from zero to functional in, in just 21 days, you can absolutely do it too. It's not about being perfect, it's about being persistent. So, take the first step, stay consistent and keep going. Now go crush it.